Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sims 3 speed build. Uh, this house was actually inspired by the, uh, I guess you'd call it the tri-level or double layered level or whatever deck porch tutorial that I had done, whatever you want to call it. I'm not really too sure exactly. The tiered deck and porch tutorial that I had done. Um, if you did not see that tutorial, I'll go ahead and link that for you down below. Uh, that way you can see that tutorial so you can see a little more in depth on what I am currently doing here. Uh, anyway, that is pretty much where the inspiration for this house came from. As soon as I did that tutorial, it's like the house, that, even though it was a really cheap house I had done, I was like, man, that would be just such a cute little house if I were to recreate that into like an actual, you know, a build. So I went in right away and just started building. Um... Now the one thing I did end up learning, because I don't normally, this is actually the first actual tiered deck or porch that I've ever actually done before. Um, so this is actually the first time I got to experiment by making the stairs, you know, different heights and things like that. I didn't want the foundation to be higher than it normally would be. I wanted it to be tiered, but I didn't want it to be any higher than it would be if you didn't do anything with it at all, basically, was the effect I wanted. Um, of course, here I am fighting with the roof, but I'll eventually get past the roof here and move on to the deck itself out front. But as you can see, it's not as high as it was in the tutorial. Uh, the one thing I had learned is if you shrink the steps, the height, you will not get the foundation piece um, in the you know down the side like I was showing in the tutorial I don't really know why that is I feel as if I have gotten it to work before oh, I I'm pretty certain I have it seems like I've gotten it to work out before but for some reason uh, if I tried making the stairs less than four steps high I mean even if I tried three steps high the foundation piece would not go in so I'm not really too sure why that is. As you can see, I have the four steps up a little bit higher and then just two there down below. Um, I do cover it up so you won't see it. There are ways to get around if you're not able to get it to work. There are ways and you'll see right here. Um, basically, I'm going to use a different style of... I do change those railings. Those railings don't stay. Uh, but basically, this is what I end up doing. And I think it actually turns out really nice. I take these beams or these pillars here and I create outdoor lighting with them. I think it turned, I don't know, I thought it added a really nice touch. And then I used them to decorate the outside of the house just to kind of incorporate them more. But basically it just, as you can see right there, I'm creating little outdoor lighting pieces with them and at the same time they cover up any imperfection of the railing so uh, so then I just go ahead and put them throughout the rest of the house just to incorporate them into the build that way they you know look like they're supposed to be with this house so um, that was that's one way you can get around with not having to uh, mess around with the little foundation pieces if you choose you don't really want to you can just create kind of like a railing or you know um, whatever you want to call this that I'm doing it's kind of a railing but it's kind of a like a retaining wall or just a regular porch wall or something like that if you don't want to mess with it you can just do something like this I think it turned out rather cute um, I really like the way it looked in this house. So, and yes, I do. I have realized that I I'm kind of making a lot of brown houses. In fact, the next house I do that'll be coming up, I think, is also in brown. So, <laughs> I am sorry if you're not really a fan of brown houses. Um, I don't know why. For some reason, I am just really feeling the brown siding and roof right now so I don't know uh, but of course that can always be changed if you want to change it to a different color go right ahead um, it's not gonna hurt my feelings any so and that dormer is a fake dormer there is no upstairs um, I didn't even bother to try to see if there would be an upstairs uh, what I wanted to do with this house is I also mm -hmm. wanted to make it a little bit different uh, I wanted it to look like it was a small house 
but in all actuality it's actually rather big this house has three bedrooms in it and they're good sized bedrooms um, and it has three bathrooms it has a game room um, of course it has a dining room a laundry room a family room and of course your kitchen so it's actually really big and I'm not going to spoil it for you you're just going to have to watch the rest of this video to see exactly how I get all those rooms into this little house so I uh, here we are working on doing some more exterior stuff I wanted to do kind of I don't know something a little fancy with this uh, but as you can see I do you know kinda of struggle a little bit trying to figure out how to get it to work if you were to put a floor piece on like I had it actually as you can see it darkens the beam for some reason probably because it thinks it's inside of a room I guess uh, so instead I decided just to go ahead and put a bush inside of it just to kinda of make it I don't know cover up the fact that it's you know not stone on top like I originally wanted I wanted it to give the illusion of being um, like uh, a mailbox thing or something <laughs> I guess um, I'm trying to think of the wording I apologize for that um, you know just kinda like a special mailbox basically so your mailbox should work still just fine I have done this multiple times and the houses I have done them in I have played in a few of them and the mailboxes still work now I don't always test it because of course in order to test the mailbox you have to actually have the house in game and I don't normally go to that extent in testing my houses I do normally do a quick run through um, I open up that house using master controller and I just send a sim in and test a few things however you cannot test everything and I believe a mailbox is one of them because it's not your mailbox so of course you can't touch it so <laughs> um, but you know just those kinds of testings and stuff I don't uh, do anything with um, I don't do those types I don't actually put the house in my game and have a sim live in it and test it that way it just it takes more time to set up a game and to do that than it does for me just to snatch up a sim off the pre-made town and uh, you know go with it so but as you can see here we are we're working on some more of the interior we have a split level the living room or family room area is sunken in so that make you know that's kind of a nice touch you have a little bit of a indoor balcony in this house um, and then of course as you can see we have stairs going to the down the basement now if you do not know how to do stairs into the basement with a foundation I do also have a tutorial for that as well um, just go to my playlists under tutorials and right there they are there will be all the tutorials I have done and if you have any other requests for other tutorials I will be glad to do those for you so this house has a basement and that would be how we get all those rooms in there um, like I said I wanted this house to incorporate a few different things we have the tiered deck we have a split level inside and then of course we have the basement so you can have added features like um, the game room that's going to be down there and everything else so uh, now we're just kind of working on the kitchen um, sometimes I like to have some kind of entryway into the kitchen or into the house but in this case because the house is kind of on the smaller side I chose to go with um, basically you enter into the kitchen now this kitchen, um, I don't normally use custom, or it's not custom content, I apologize for that. I don't normally use store content items um, when it comes to the kitchen just because that can sometimes be, I guess, in an area that some people don't have. But in this case, I don't know. I just wanted to use it. Um, I can't remember which store item it is. In fact, I did a uh, review on it actually not that long ago but I can't remember what it was called and um but anyway that's pretty much what it has I don't use a lot of store content but the kitchen is store content so if you don't have those cabinets then your game is just going to replace whatever it is you do not have with something that you do have so you can still download this house so you can still play in this house it just may not look exactly the way you see here and I wanted to incorporate the stone 
that is outside around the house inside the house I just thought that would be a nice touch and I do different things throughout the house to try to help cover the beams whenever you put a beam in the corner it will come through into the house itself so you'll have to keep that in mind while you're building that you're gonna have to either just deal with it and ignore the fact that the pillar kind of pokes through on the corners as you can see them here and there as the camera turns you can see them or you're just gonna have to find different ways try to be creative with it you know don't just use the same stuff over and over again be recre be creative try new things uh, that's what I do uh, just stick things wherever you want to put them and if you and just try different stuff and then play in the house and you'll see how it works with the Sims mm -hmm. believe it or not a lot of this stuff will still work um, even though you have move objects on and move stuff around believe it or not they still work <laughs> uh, and the more you test with it the more you mess around with it of course the more you'll learn and know what you can and can't do so um, and I like when I do a, a fireplace and stuff, I prefer to try to keep the chimney because I like the idea or the thought and the visual aspect anyway of uh, smoke actually coming out of the fireplace. I don't know. I just like mm -hmm. the way that looks. Here what I am doing is I'm just getting the lighting and everything taken care of for the split level. In Sims 3, of course, the lighting does not travel from floor to floor, but if you use these little light things that you find in Bite a Bug, um, they, you know, that, that can help. And I usually use paneling uh, also on the lower level. It just seems to help take care of the color difference. Like if I were to try to use the same color, the same wall pattern on the lower level as the top level, no matter what you do, you're pretty much never going to get the exact same color. I know that seems really hard to believe, but you might get the right color on one portion of the wall, but at a different angle somewhere else, the color will be incorrect. I have found that the best way and easiest way to uh, keep it from having too much of a glare issue is by using the paneling it seems to work the best and I like the, you know I kinda like the way it looks anyway it, it seems to work good and it looks good so um, but anyway uh, just going through and doing some more recoloring I have this real bad problem with having to recolor everything <laughs> um, very seldom I mean the lamps a lot of times I choose a lamp that is already pre-colored and kind of a color combination that I want but most of the time, just about absolutely everything I put down is going to get recolored. I just have, I don't know, I just have this problem with having to recolor absolutely everything. Uh, of course, in The Sims 4, I don't get that luxury to recolor very, you know, objects too much. And you know, it really bugs me. I hate not having at least a color wheel. I'm okay with not having patterns if they didn't want to put in all the patterns that's fine but come on a color wheel what where was the color wheel honestly lagging the game it's not the color wheel it was all the patterns that you have to load up every single time that you go into chaos every time you're trying to change something it's the patterns it has nothing to do with the color wheel I wish they would never have taken that away uh, because how many times, I mean seriously, you can't always use the same curtain style on every window. But if you were in a store, even if you couldn't buy the same curtain style, you would still try to get them um, at least remotely close to around the same color. I mean, if, if you got this curtain and you wanted it to be in a blue color, but you had to get this other style instead, you wouldn't get one that was yellow or red I not for the same room I mean really we need it really need the color wheel I mean oh my gosh I hate not having that color wheel and it drives me absolutely bonkers <laughs> it really does I just I don't know I like to theme my rooms if you look at any of my builds all of the rooms in some way or another is color themed off of something 
Like for instance, this one, I decided I wanted to use a border on the wall for the dining room. The color theme comes from the border, the green and the red, little red accents. Um, in other rooms, I'll do one color completely different on the wall and then accent the room in a different color. I just like to do accents. Well, like this one is more or less a purple room. I don't know, you know, sometimes I do that too. I will do the whole room in different shades. Not the same exact color, just a bunch of different shades of the same color. So like this one's kind of like a purplish color room. Um, I don't copy the color just because I like the variation in the purple. I go through the color wheel. Um, I don't use very many patterns. Actually a lot of times I use the same patterns that come with the object itself. I just use the color wheel. All the different things you can do with that color wheel, all the different colors. You don't need a bunch of patterns, just use different colors. So that's pretty much what I do. So. Uh, but anyway, this one is just the little half bath. Uh, that is the Worthington sink that is from the store. If there's anything from the store that you, you know, that I would recommend getting is that Worthington sink. You can put that in the corner of a room and it is still usable. So you can create some pretty small spaces with this bath, with this sink. It does kind of poke through the wall just ever so slightly. So you usually have to have something on the other side that cover it up. Like for instance in this one, the refrigerator is covering one and that shower is covering the other. Uh, I use this sink, I know in my beachy sunflower, I believe I create a bathroom even smaller yet than, um, than that bathroom there. At least I'm pretty sure it's smaller. It's either the same size or smaller. I'm not really too sure, but you can get some pretty small bathrooms or with that sink. So I definitely recommend that one of any uh, anything. Uh, I think you can even get that sink all by itself. You don't have to buy the set. I think you can get that one by itself. So um, here I'm just trying to clutter up the bathroom a little bit. Like I said, you don't always have to use uh, you know, large objects to cover up the beams. Like in this case, I put a sink there and then put them big flowers that you, believe it or not, them flowers are not found in plants. If you're wondering where those flowers are, they're not in plants. They're in the decorative or the decorations or I'm trying to think. It's under, it's not the plants, it's just like the miscellaneous objects in it. And they're down probably halfway through the list. And they're these really big, big flowers and I use those once in a while. They are kind of big so they look overpowering to a sink but in this case I kind of wanted to use them to help cover up that beam. Uh, so but there's a lot of things that I do in houses that are pretty much the same from house to house like the clutter objects. We really don't have very many good clutter objects. Um, I try to create different things with different tables or maybe use a mirror instead of a picture all the time and I try to you know combine different objects into each other just to try to create different looks but we really just don't have very good color or clutter objects and I a lot of it is there's a picture frame for instance I, I don't know maybe my picture frames glitched I don't know but that stupid thing won't go anywhere but the floor or like um, stacks of books for instance. I use the ones from the bakery because once in a while because I know I can put those on a shelf or a counter and I can put them on stuff. There's how many books in the clutter objects that you cannot put on anything. They can only go on the floor. Now some of those are they have old stacked books. Those I can kind of understand being sitting on the floor. But what about the nice books that look like they have nice covers and they're colored and they look like they're in good shape. You wouldn't always stick them on the floor. You would put them, you know, on a dresser or on a shelf or, um, I don't know, maybe a counter, I guess. I don't know. You wouldn't just always stick them on the floor. It just kind of frustrating. Sometimes because you can't always stack things on top of stuff, sometimes I will fill up a one of those shelves 
and then I'll merge it into something that way it looks like something got cluttered up. I like the houses to look like they're lived in. I don't want this house that looks like it's just for show. I want it to look like your sims have been living here and they have been living here for a little while and they've started to clutter stuff up as you know people do tend to do. Uh, but you'll see in this room here it's kind of, I don't really know what kind of room. You can use it as a teen's room, a guest room. I guess it really doesn't matter. There's really no particular sim for it but you'll see here on a shelf for instance a bookshelf you cannot put anything on top of that bookshelf I'm sorry but if there was a bookshelf in my room I would probably have stuff sitting on top of it and what's nice about those bookshelves is you can grab one of those shelves right there I believe is from generations and it actually gives it kind of like a nice uh, detailed kind of like top to the bookshelf instead of just being flat it gives a nice trim color it the same and mer merge it down into the shelf and there you or into the bookshelf and there you go you got a bunch of clutter items sitting on top of your bookshelf so or like this um vanity there uh yeah you can put a few things on it but if you notice well you probably can't see it now but when you go to play in this house you'll see that it looks like it has some bathroom supply things on it or something that's actually one that wall piece or whatever that you that you can get it's actually a shelf that comes with like it looks like powder and I don't know what all of that stuff is but you can actually merge that into something else sometimes I put it into counters and in that case I put it inside the vanity so um, in this case here we got in this room this is a kids room um, and it is definitely more decorated towards a kids room and I guess you could say more of a boys room but I know lots of girls out there that would love having a room with cars on the wall. So it doesn't have to be just for a boys room. None of my rooms are actually specifically that way. I just like to color coordinate everything and there's not very many patterns in the game that offer the idea of being neutral. Um, I can usually make a nursery more neutral than I can the actual kids room itself. There's just not enough objects to do it with. So, enough patterns, I should say. It, it's just not as easy, I guess. So, um, so you, a lot of times I just choose a pattern and I just go with it. Uh, it's not for any one gender. I really don't care. In fact, I just kind of stick my sims in a room. I re could care less if they're a boy or a girl. But, you know, it's up to you. And if you don't like the cars, then go ahead and change it. That's fine. If you like making your houses a little bit more for your sims and your family then that's fine with me everybody plays their game a little bit different so not a problem now the reason why I'm adding more lights to the outside is because of the fact that the lighting in the sims 3 does not travel from level to level and even though the stairs and the deck is outside they are not considered the same level so if you want to get lighting in all the areas instead of just one you will have to add more lights in different spots just to you know help light it up that way it looks like the lights are going from one level to the next um, but here are the screenshots I hope you enjoyed this speed build um, I had fun building it uh, I like doing different things like split levels and changing you know having different layered level to ah uh, uh, stairs and things like that and I just thought it was a nice add-on a nice build to do that would incorporate using constrained floor elevation for you which is what the tutorials here in the past have been using they've been you know mostly around constrained floor elevation and what you can do with stairs um, I just thought it would be nice let's create a build that incorporates what we've been learning so here is the speed build for you. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or suggestions or requests, please leave them down in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye.